Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from Mall of Road. Have a look around. It can't get any better here. That is beach camping as its absolute finest. I'm on the west coast of Fraser Island and you see the ocean here. Over there is a little creek with fresh water, beautiful green grass, the beach. So let me show you around Fraser a bit and uh, show you the best parts of the west coast and north coast of Fraser Island. Oh! You need to take a ferry to reach Fraser Island. You can either do that from Inskip or from Harvey Bay. We decided for Inskip. The sand at Inskip is notoriously soft and people who don't air down quite often get stuck there. However, with the correct tire pressure, it is not an issue. So, just put in a Huron village. Fraser's East Coast beaches also double as a landing strip for small tourist airplanes. So it is not unusual that the beach is closed and that an airplane is coming down or taking off just in front of you. The SS Mahino was built in Scotland in 1905 and boasted excellent facilities for the first-class passengers who formed the majority of her cargo on trips between Sydney and Melbourne. In 1915 she was converted as a medical ship and then served on the many Gallipoli battlefields. In 1935 she was taken to Japan uh, to be scrapped but one of the tow lines broke and uh, she drifted onto the Fraser Island where she still lies. So this is the um, knife blade sand blow here, and this is how all the coffee rock begins forming. By starting from the ocean, the, the sand blows over and uh, encompasses and buries all of the eucalypt forests. And over the years, it compacts it down and eventually it becomes coffee rock. The knife blade sand blow is actually the biggest sand blow on Fraser Island with a height of over 150 meters. New sand blows may develop when stabilizing plant cover is damaged uh, by fire, vehicles or pedestrian traffic. On our way to the west coast we came across this very rutted section with some pretty deep holes. It showed off quite nicely the flex of the different suspensions on our vehicles. The leaf sprung Troopy needed a bit higher speed to make sure that the momentum carried him over the holes. The noise was from one of Dave's oh. springs reseeding itself. There are plenty of water crossings on Fraser Island. Before we could reach our campground, we needed to cross one of the many creeks. We timed our arrival with low tide, but nevertheless walked the river to make sure it is not too deep. At low tide the crossing was no issue, however at high tide the water would be well over the bonnet. Driving this crossing at low tide also meant that we were driving fresh water and not incoming salt water. Please also keep in mind that a lot of the creek inlets uh, to the ocean can change on a daily basis. So what worked yesterday may not work uh, today on the same water level. <laughs> Don't tell anyone where we are. Okay, we had a secret spot. Secret yeah. spot. Very Somewhere secret. Off the southeast coast of Queensland. It was time for a swim in these green turquoise waters. 
However, I scouted the water first with a drone and as you will see a bit later, anywhere on the ocean around Fraser, swimming is not really recommended. You don't want to go too deep into the water. The west coast of Fraser Island is absolutely picturesque. However, to reach these campgrounds you need to time the tide. You also need to be 100% self-sufficient. There are no toilets and there is no water beside the freshwater creek which is flowing into the ocean. The morning and evening is sand fly and mozzy time so make sure you take a heavy duty insect repellent. It is worth mentioning that Irukandji and box jellyfish have been sighted on the west coast of Fraser Island. While they can occur at any time of the year, the peak season is November to May. In Australia, box jellyfish always refers to a particular species of jellyfish called the Cyronex flecari. It is regarded as the most venomous animal on the planet. There certainly are dingoes around, so it pays to be dingo safe. You can't leave any food or cooking stuff out. And you need to take care of kids. The ocean is tidal here and I thought this shows quite nicely the differences between low tide and high tide. Like the most campgrounds on Fraser, you can't have a campfire. However, sitting on the beach and watching the sunset and the moonrise is just absolutely magnificent. Seven o'clock in the morning, Fraser West Coast. Absolutely stunning. Some fresh river water on the boil. It should be all right. Give it a minute. I have to say that new battery setup, uh, the Live PO4, yeah, I'm super, super happy with it so far. I can't believe it. I mean, uh, I had the fridge running obviously the whole night as a freezer. I charged several drone batteries, iPad, phone, three cameras, and I was down 27 amp hours uh, this morning. And we have not even 8 o'clock and I'm back to 100%. Um, I'm running the Red Arc 150 panel on the front. You know, a little bit obstructed as you can see here. So it certainly has not um, full clear sun. Then I have my 110 watt panel on top. Here, also not in full sun. It's not even 8 o'clock and my battery is back to 100% state of charge. A couple of hundred meters further north from us was a big camp of fishermen from Team uh, Mad Mullet. They work together with the Department for Fishery and the University of Queensland to pretty much catch um, great white sharks and hammerheads. Once they are caught, they will be tagged, measured and released back into the ocean. It is absolutely amazing to see when they catch one of these mega predators not far from the coast. This shows exactly why the Fraser coast is not really a good swimming destination and you certainly shouldn't go too deep in the water here. We all remembered Handy standing in the water up to his chest and casting the line trying to catch something. These sharks are amazing creatures and well worth protecting. 
We need to remember that once we enter the water, we are in their territory and not the other way around. A few days before, the guys from Team Med Mullet pulled out a nine foot uh, great white and also a hammerhead. So it definitely pays to uh, be careful when swimming around Fraser Island. Nine foot! Nine foot white! The guys tried to create as little stress as possible for the shark and do the tagging and measuring and releasing it back out in the shortest amount of time. Just getting its bearings. Yeah, it's got its bearings, there it is, heading straight out. My good mate Scott Mason spent uh, December in the same campground However, they had an absolute king tide and storm and as you can see that area is not really safe if it's getting rough out there. Um, he fortunately didn't lose his car but a few people who camped there lost their car, boat. You definitely need to be aware of the weather forecasts if you intend to camp on any of the beach campgrounds that's on the east or west coast. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This is the end of part one of our Fraser Island adventure. I'll give you a quick preview what you can expect in the next part. Hey guys, all my videos are self-funded and the advert revenue doesn't even cover one tank of fuel. So if you enjoy my videos, it would be greatly appreciated if you could support me on Patreon. This will also give you early access to most of my videos.